Okay, hello. In this video, we are looking at the Cambridge A-Level Computer Science Paper 4 from the 2021 series. This was the version one of the paper. And the first question is a linked list question. An unordered linked list uses a 1D array to store data. Each item in the linked list of record type node with a field data and a field next node. The current contents of the linked list are... Then we've got this table representing what's going on. So we've got an array with 10 items. And the start pointer is zero. So the node at index zero links to the node at index one. And then the node at index one links to the node at index four. The node at index four links back to the node at index two, which links to seven, which links to three. And then we hit minus one. So that represents the end of the list. We've then got the, the empty list. So the unused nodes start from index five, linking to six, linking to eight, linking to nine, and then that's the end of the kind of free node list. Um, so let's start um, solving the first question. So in Python, we don't have a native support for the record type. So instead, what the example model is that we use a class, but with um, normally with public properties rather than private and um, with no methods. So a class with no methods is kind of like a record in Python. Um, so let's put these in. Let's just say declare data, which is an integer. I'm going to use um, zero to represent null data, but I am going to use minus. I'm not going to use minus one in Python because minus one is the end of an array. So it makes more sense to use a non the non value in Python. So that's the evidence for the first question. We've defined a class. Um, for some reason I can't paste. Let's try that again. Let's say OK. Uh, let's have a look at 1B. Write program code for the main program. How do we do a main method in Python? Well, you need to check if this thunder name value is equal to main. This means that the program is being or this code is being executed from this file. This is the main program. And we want to declare a 1D array of type node with the identifier linked list, which is an array of zero to nine nodes of node. And then how do we do this in Python? Well, I need to make my array now. So linked list is a node for uh, in range 10 that will create 10 nodes and now i need to set up my table um, i need to first of all let's make our pointers so start pointer should be equal to zero and empty list which is like the free pointer should be linked to five so start pointer points to the front of the list the first node in the array that is in the link, link list an empty list points to the first node in the array that is the start of the free nodes, the free list. Uh, let's put in our table data. So at index zero, um, we have uh, data being set to one. At index zero, we have next node being set to four. So let's just copy and paste those statements. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Let's update the, the indices. So this is for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and in this one, which is nine. So copy and paste really is your friend at this point, isn't it? Five and four. So the first one should be one and one, five and four, six and seven, seven and null, two and two, zero and six, zero and eight, fifty-six and three, zero and nine, and finally zero and minus one. Technically, because we're initializing the data to zero, we don't really need to fill in these ones, but I'm just going to leave it in there anyway, I think. Um, that's one should be null, sorry. So that should be, let's just check. Let's view our terminal. Let's just check that that works. OK. 
good. Everything compiles, so I assume it's fine. Let's put in that evidence for the second question. Okay, we're now on to 1C1. The procedure output nose takes the array and start pointer as parameters. Let's do that. So we're coding a procedure call. I've got no idea why they've decided to go to camel case instead of pascal case for this one. But anyway, so it takes the array. The array is called link list, which is a list, and start pointer, which is an integer as parameters. And the procedure outputs the data from the linked list by following the next node value. So what we need to do is we need to start from the start pointer and then keep overwriting the pointer with next node until we find the end of the list. And where's the end of the list? Well, the end of the list is when next node has a value of null. So what we'd say something like is, um, let's say pointer is start pointer, while pointer is not equal to null, while we've not reached the end of the list, then let's output the current link list data. So at this current point, pointer, let's print out our data and then let's go to the next one. So how do we go to the next one where we say, well, now the pointer needs to be the current pointers, pointer, each pointer's pointer. And then that will keep traversing the list until we end up with pointer being equal to null. And that's at the point where we stop and we exit the loop. Um, let's just test that to see if it works. So let's just put in an output nodes with link list and start pointer. And let's see. So let's just check that that matches what's in the table. So we started at zero and then we went to one which has a value of five. Then we went to four, which has a value of two. Then we went to two, which has a value of six. Then we went to seven, which has the value 56. And then we went to three, which has the value of seven. And then that was the end of the list. So that's been successful. That means we can copy our code into the evidence. Let's have a look what they're asking us to do for 1C2. Edit the main program to call the procedure output nodes. It's almost like I knew already. So take a screenshot to show the output of output nodes. So no mark for the codes for the for calling the for the main method for calling the procedure, but you only need to get a method for outputting the values in the list. Let's put that in. 1D1. The function add node takes the linked list and pointers as parameters. Let's make it add node takes the link list and pointers as parameters. So it takes in start pointer, which is an int, and empty list, which is an int, and returns something. It returns a Boolean value of true or false. And what we need to do is Oh, and then takes as input the data to be added to the end of the link list. So we need to make another another value called um, something like new data. Let's follow their naming pattern that they've set, which is going to be an integer. Um, so what we need to do is we need to traverse the list. So it's an append function. We need to traverse the list until we find the end of the list. And then we need to append. Um, so it's a similar algorithm to this one, isn't it? So let's let's copy and paste that code. But instead of outputting each time, what we want to do is we remember, want to remember what came before. So let's make this variable previous, which is going to store the previous. Because once we've reached the end of the list, previous is what will then link to the new node. Um, so what we want to do is once we've finished, we've found the end of the list, we want to say, okay, at previous, this now links to the new pointer. And what is the value of new pointer? So new pointer comes from this variable empty list, which is a parameter. That's where our next new node will be. And then um, we need to set up empty list ready for next time. So empty list will then be whatever is in the link list at the empty list pointer, that one's next node. 
Uh, we probably need to do a check here because we can't do this if the list is already full. So if empty list ever gets a value of null, this means the list is full. So if it gets to that point, then that's when we turn false. Um, otherwise, we can just continue here and we can do the things we said we would do. So once we've added in the new pointer, we only need to do that to the next node property though, not to, we don't want to overwrite the node, do we? So we do it to the next node and then we also want to add in the data and then the data value is this parameter new data. So let's just trace through this in our heads. So if empty list is none, that means the list is full and then we can just end return false. Otherwise, let's take a copy of the free pointer empty list. Let's get the free pointer empty list ready for next time. Let's take a copy of the start pointer and call it pointer. Let's loop until we find the end of the list. And um, each time we traverse the link, we need to make sure we take note of what the previous pointer was because once pointer is none, that's the end of the list and pointer won't be much help. We then need the previous pointer that allows us to link to the new pointer and oh made a mistake and the new pointers data is what we want to set to the new data and then there's one more step that we need we need to make sure that we break away the new node from the free list because if you look at this case here so empty list is equal to five and if we left the empty list, if we left node five with its new value and the node three linking to the new node, we'd then have node five still linking to the, to the rest of the unused nodes. So that's why we need to make sure that we set this to null. And then that should be the end of the add node function. So let's go on to doing um, D2, let's call add node. We need to call add node. We need to call output node twice. We need to pass in. Okay, I think maybe I've misinterpreted this question. So it takes the link list and pointers as parameters, then takes as input the data. So I don't think new data should be a parameter, should it? So let's add something in here. Let's say new data is an input from the user. What data to add? And, but we do need to pass in the link list. We do need to pass in start pointer. We do need to pass in um, empty list. And we need to make sure that we get the result out of the function. So when we call the function, it's going to return true or false. And we need to say something dependent on the result. So we need to say something like if result is true, print added. Otherwise, we need to print list was full. So I'm changing my mind here. We perhaps don't need to print this error message inside the scope of the, the function because it's asking us to do something similar. We wouldn't have it in both scopes. Um, and then there's one more thing to note here. Obviously, we are changing empty list and we're also um, oh, perhaps changing start pointer. That's something else that we need to consider, isn't it? So if this new node is in fact the first node, then we would do, would this handle that case? Pointer is start pointer. It's immediately null. Ah, so what we can just do is set initialize previous to zero. And then if, if start pointer is immediately null and then the loop never executes, the loop doesn't execute at all, what that will mean is that previous will have a value of zero. So that would mean that previous is now a start node. 
And then what we just want to do here is just say something like if previous equals zero, start pointer is now zero. So I'm not sure whether these kind of intricacies will be covered in this mark scheme because the only thing they're expect, expecting this linked list to be able to do, it seems, is add one new node to the nodes that already exist. So you're not being expected to kind of deal with these cases of, okay, what is the what if the list is empty? Do we need to deal with the fact that start pointer might have a null value? There are a few other ways of doing that, but that's how we'll do it in this, this implementation. Um, yeah, so because we are changing start point and we are changing empty list, what you should expect is that we need to return these values from the function. Um, however, because they're only asking you to do this once, it's not actually going to be necessary and it only describes the return values to be false and true. And it don't think it will affect the question's answer from working. Let's have a look and see. Let's fix the bugs. Okay, let's add in a number and then it added the list. So you see, even, even though now we haven't got the updated value of start pointer and empty list outside of the scope of the subroutine, it doesn't actually matter because all we're needing to do for the question is add one value. Let's put that in as, as, a, as our evidence. So that was, hold on a sec, let's go back. So 1D1 was add node. And 1D2 was calling. And 1D3 was the screenshot. So in this case, I need to make my terminal a little bit bigger so I can see everything that we did. Okay, so